when the human race arrived from the mists to settle the disparate lands of Tyria, they saw a world in which their primacy was assured. For a time, this was so, and their kingdoms ruled every continent, but this age has now passed. Many ancient and famous states exist today as only ruins, swept away by ocean tides or the wrath of awakening dragons. But it was not only the movement of the world that has stripped mankind of its place of dominance. Rival contenders are eager to assume the primacy that humanity once held, and none have had greater success than the Char Legions. Feline in appearance and evoking characteristics of tigers, lions, or leopards, the Char straddle the line between the so-called civilized races of Tyria and the beasts that stalk the wilderness. When running on all four limbs in a loping gait, they might easily be mistaken for some brute creation, only to then stand on their hind legs and become strikingly humanoid in behavior. But it is their sharp claws and razor teeth that truly define the char and mark them as a race of hunters. Char society has gone through numerous iterations and evolutions, growing increasingly oriented towards war across their history. While adept in various aspects of diplomacy, industry, commerce, and discovery, their application within their civilization will invariably be towards supporting an ongoing or potential war effort. Char cubs are raised within a strict paramilitary structure, entering a kind of martial academy known as a farah, roughly a year after birth. Within, char cubs are encouraged to form their own social hierarchy, which will culminate in the creation of a warband the foundational societal structure of the Char. Though non-familial in nature, warbands act as extended families and are trained to fight as military units on the battlefields. Within a warband, the Char are taught to consider themselves soldiers first, regardless of whatever profession they may ultimately enter. Unsoldierly trades are left to the feeble and infirm, and should a healthy Char dedicate themselves too closely to such a profession, they might be expelled from their warband and become a gladium, the lowest rank of their society. To the Char, bonds of loyalty and connection become strongest when forged during combat. Therefore, a Char without a warband is not trusted, and it is considered the duty of every gladium to rejoin one as quickly as possible. For much of their history, the Char nation resembled a military dictatorship with supreme authority invested in a single individual known as the Karnur, or Primus Imperator. Their role was legitimized through the wielding of the Claw of the Karnur, an ancient Char relic that had gained significant political and symbolic importance to their race. It was at times an apparatus of revolution, a key to power, and a symbol of stability. Despite its importance, the Claw has only recently re-entered Char society, having previously been lost in battle before it was finally reclaimed. During its long absence, no Khan Ur has been named, and power has instead been divided between four high legions, Ash, Blood, Flame, and Iron. In the absence of a Khan Ur, the Char Nation is in practical terms an oligarchic cratocracy in which the four high legions compete for influence and prestige. Each legion is led by an Imperator, and together they coordinate the activities and conquests of their race. Religious differences and internal rivalries have made any lasting coordination difficult, however. Each legion has instead become a nation into itself, fiercely protective of their independence and governance of their own territories. Though three of the High Legions, Ash, Blood, and Iron, have been able to form a loose confederation, the Flame Legion is outcast and the source of an ongoing civil war. Directly beneath each of the Imperators within the Char hierarchy is a Primus Warband, first among equals and namesake of the Legion itself. The remaining Warbands are grouped under various other commanders, granted the titles of Tribune, Centurion, Legionnaire, or Lieutenant, depending on the number of Warbands they lead and the quality of their soldiery. A warrior race above all, the history of the Char is defined by its military conquests and relentless expansionism. 
their earliest records tell of a great migration from their ancient homeland across the Blaze Ridge Mountains. During these times, the warbands competed with one another for resources and territory until they were finally united under the first of the Khanur. Though their true name has been lost beneath this auspicious title, the Khanur led the unified Char into a golden era, seizing for themselves the lands of the Dwarfs, Grawl, and many other races. It was humanity, however, that would prove to be their most dangerous adversary. United, the Char were an equal match to the kingdoms of men, but when the Khan Ur was assassinated, the legions quickly fractured. Every attempt to expand their dominion into human territory was swept back. In time, their great southern rival, the Kingdom of Ascalon, constructed a great wall, seemingly ending any chances of a Char victory. Many Imperators would claim the title of Khan Ur in the centuries that followed, but none could unify the legions to the same extent, and the reign of the successors was usually ineffectual and brief. The Char began to blame the human gods for their lack of success, and sought out deities they might worship as their own. When demonic creatures known as Titans were discovered by the Flame Legion within the volcano Hrangmer, the prayers of the Char were answered. Imbued with the magic of the Titans, Char society rapidly transformed. A new leadership cast of shamans and priests formed within each legion, and they united the Char to the same extent as the very first Karnur. With the Cauldron of Cataclysm, a relic of great power gifted to them by the Titans, the Char unleashed a terrible searing across Ascalon, destroying its great northern wall. Though their most capable rival had been brought to ruin, the Char invasion fell short of conquering the more distant southern realm of Krita. Instead, one of the Titans was ultimately slain in front of the Char's own eyes by human heroes. That the Titans were mortal was a shock to the Char, throwing their strict hierarchy into chaos. The Shamans were quickly shunned and despised, and the High Legions rebelled against the Flame Legion. In the many years since, a fragile peace has grown between the Char and the other races of the world. Ancient evils arising in places of forgotten power threaten both Char and human alike, and a spirit of cooperation is beginning to overtake the old enmities. The return of the Claw of the Karnur from Kryta to the Char was a powerful, symbolic gesture, and for the first time, the peace between these rivals is not merely a prelude to another war. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 